Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I have another SQL tutorial for you today. I think that this one's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna start out with a really basic query and we're gonna build on it one step at a time. So things we're gonna go through are things like join. You're gonna see a group by again. Uh, we covered that in my last video. Uh, we'll do a calculated field. This will be something somewhat new. Um, and then we'll also, I'll show you how to filter down using where and having. We'll go through the difference there. And um, I think it'll be probably pretty quick, maybe five under 10 minutes for this video. So let's jump into it and let's see where we end up. So just flipping over to PG Admin, uh, just working on the same tables that we've had for the last few tutorials. If you haven't seen them before, they're in my YouTube page. Um, feel free to check it out. So the first table we have is this fact game log and these columns are nothing new. Uh, we've reviewed it in other videos. So here's our, our columns and our data. And we're also looking at the dimension dates table. So there is a common um, column that we're gonna join on. And in dimension dates, it's called ID. And in fact game log, it is called date. So we'll go ahead and start building our new query and we'll go, for the time being, we'll just select everything. Uh, and then we could work our way down from there. I'm going to give an alias for fact game log and we'll just use it as F for now. And then we'll join it to dimension dates as D. Whenever you go to join tables, you do have to specify where it is. And that's what we were just looking at with the two columns. So we're going to go through that right now. So we'll say on F for the fact game log and the column name is date equals d dot id and that would be part of the dimension state table so once we have that we have enough to run our query uh, it's just going to be everything so from both tables at this point so in this case we see 2019 october 4th and when we scroll all the way over starting to look at our dimension dates table we can see the date here 2019, October 4th, and the day was a Friday. It was the 40th week of the year. It was not a weekend and not a holiday. So that's our really basic join, and we can start to clean this up a little rather than taking in all of the columns, we could specify which ones we want. So we could say, you do have to specify using the alias. Um, so in this case, we would use d.day is, is a good one that we can work with, and We'll also go with goals for, so this is coming from the other table, f.gf, and then we'll also, in between those two, I'm just gonna go f.key, so we can get a sense of how many games were played, um, but that'll come into play as we go farther down the line. So we'll go ahead and run this, and we just get a smaller data set here. So looking at the ID for the game, the goals for and what day of the week it was. So ideally from this, you know, maybe you're trying to figure out what day you want to go see your favorite team play. And we can do a group by and we can say dot d dot day for the group by statement. Now when you're working with a group by, you do have to use some sort of aggregation. So we'll move up top and we'll say a count of f dot key. And we'll say as games played. And then for goals four, we'll do a sum, and we'll say as goals scored. So we'll take a look at, at this, see what we have so far. So now we're getting a lot of games played. We don't have any filters in place right now. I have about four years of data in here. You can see 63 games on Tuesdays. That does seem to be the most popular, or maybe Saturday. And basically, let's just add a little bit more in here. Before we go to group by, we'll add in a where clause. And I believe it's called season year. We'll see if I get this right. We'll say equals 2023. Let's see how that goes. So now we filter down. There should be, if you were to tally all these up, there should be 82 games played. And now just looking at the amount of goals scored here, um, it's a little bit tough to read, right? So if you were with me for the last video, we can add in an order by. And we can say 
One really cool thing about SQL is you can go one, two, three. You can say order by three being our third column and then descending. So we'll go ahead and run that. And now it's ordered by goal scored. So again, really cool. And um, if you wanted to maybe only see days that have over 50 goals, that's where a having clause comes into play. We use where to filter down, and we did that earlier in the query saying, show me only 2023. But now if I wanna work on this aggregate here for like sum of goals scored, I can say having, and we'll say sum FGF, oops. and we'll just say is greater than 50. Uh, sorry guys, so that has to go before the order by statement. So we'll add that, I'll switch the order around a little bit. And there we go. So now we have our results that we're looking for. Um, this looks really great, but if we wanted to do take this query just even a little bit further, I'm just gonna remove this having statement for right now. And let's say we wanna create a calculated column. So we wanna know if, if on Tuesdays they played 18 games and on Saturdays they played 50 games, you know, we need some sort of ratio to bring it down. So goals per game would be a good ratio for us. And it's really easy. All we have to do is divide goals scored by goal by games played. And we can do that right here. So I've already added in the comma. We'll come down. So we'll go sum FGF divided by, and then you could say count F dot key. We'll say average, sorry, so as average goals per game. And let's see how we do. So not great. Um, all the answers come back as three. Um, is that right? Probably not. They could all be in the threes. We'll, we'll find out in just a second. Um, the reason this is happening is because we're dividing two integers and we need a floating point number. So an integer would be a whole number, just like you see here, where it's just three. A float would be 3.0. So what we can do is we can change the denominator in our calculation here to a float, and that will actually allow us to get to the next level. So in order to do that, you can just type in cast, and then you, you leave your original part here, count, and at the end you say as float, and close parentheses, and now if we go to run this, we should get a proper calculation. So again, now you, now you can see how many goals per game they're scoring. And that might help you out a little bit more if you were trying to um, establish which night you wanna to go to the game. So in this case, we don't wanna sort by column three, we wanna sort by column four, which is our average goals per game. So I'm just gonna update that. And just like that, you can start to see Okay, well, Sunday's pretty popular, 3.875 goals on average. And basically you could play around with this query. If you have more data in the system, you could switch the year, see how it's differed year over year, something like that. If we wanna come back and add in our having statement again, so we could say having. Now you can't use the numbers here in a having statement, so it's okay. We can always just copy what we did before and you could paste it in and you could say having goals greater than 3.6 or average goals per game. And when you go and run it, now you can see your results. So Sunday, uh, Saturday, Monday are probably the games you're most likely to see a goal or a lot of goals at. So we just did a lot in this query in a short period of time, but these are the kinds of things that you'll do when you're working with um, SQL and maybe connected to like a data warehouse or some database, right? At work, you probably won't be playing around with hockey stats, but you know, maybe something like sales versus inventory, linking the two tables together, throwing in some sort of aggregation and then filtering or using a having statement to actually get to the results that you're hoping to see. So I hope that this lesson helped you learn something. Um, I will make this query available on GitHub. Uh, it's not difficult if you follow along. And uh, I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time. Thanks everyone.